Father, we thank you for allowing us to gather here. And I pray over every heart, mind, and soul, whether they're watching online today or watching in their air conditioning or, or watching from a car, watching from a chair, watching from a distance. And I ask you to be God in this moment and speak over us and speak to us and allow us to be spoken through us. Father, we love you and we need you in this moment and for every moment. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 So if you're a, a child with us here today, I've got three pictures that I want you to draw. Three pictures that I want you to draw. And so the first picture that I want you to draw is God hugging you. So if you're a kid or you're a piece of paper, I want you to draw the picture of God hugging you. And for all of us adults here this morning, uh, I was reading in the scriptures this past week, and I was reading in Luke chapter 1, and this verse came across, and it really spoke to me, and I hope that in some way, in some form, in some fashion, whether you're watching online with us today or watching in person, that, that it speaks over you. And it's Luke chapter 1, verse 37. So it's one simple, but I believe a super powerful verse. And Luke chapter 1, verse 37 says this, With God, anything is possible. With God, anything is possible. And so some context around this verse is simply this, is that this is the angel Gabriel speaking to the maid Mary. And I'm choosing that word maid because I know we got a lot of kids listening, a lot of kids watching. I'm sure you've heard a, a different word. But the maid Mary has been spoken to by the angel Gabriel. And when the angel Gabriel tells her this message, understand what she just heard. She just heard that she was going to give birth in a fashion that against all odds would be impossible. She just heard that she was not only going to give birth in a fashion that was impossible, but she was going to give birth to a child that was incomprehensible. A child that these people have been waiting for for hundreds and even thousands of years. And that here she was, just a lonely gal from a town called Nazareth, which was nowhere. And she was going to be somebody important. And she looks at the angel Gabriel and says, how can this be because I am? And she inserts her butt. And I think a lot of times when it comes to what God wants to do in our life, we insert that word, but I am, and insert the blank. I'm not good enough. I don't know enough. I couldn't because of my past and everything in between there. And then the angel Gabriel looks at this maid, Mary, and he says something that I want us to take to heart today. And these five or six words, with God, anything is possible. And the reason why I'm speaking this is because I know that the gift that God gives us through belief is one of the greatest gifts that we can have. One of the greatest gifts that we can receive. And so the question that I have for each and every one of us in the room, this isn't really a room, in the driveway, in the parking lot, in your room at home, is do you believe? Do you believe? I know, and I know that you know that this gift of belief is one of the most incredible gifts. But I think we really need to ask the question to ourselves, do we truly believe when it comes to the big issues of life that COVID-19, in the midst of all the terribleness that it's caused, but it could be the greatest gift that we've ever been given? Do we believe in the midst of our country being so daggone divided, that truly and utterly that we can become the United States of America again. Do we believe? Do we believe that racial inequality, 
that it truly can be solved? Do we believe that Pepsi is greater than Coke? Or Apple is greater than Android? And now that Cam Newton is finally a New England Patriot, that the Pats and Cam can go all the way to the Super Bowl and win that thing. What do you think of home? What do you think of Cam? What do you think of Pepsi? What do you think of Apple? Of course, these aren't the important things. I'm sure it gets your attention. What about yourself? What about your life? Talking about the bigger issues, let's go down to the micro. What about your life? Do we believe that God wants to use our lives to further His kingdom? Do we truly believe that God wants to use broken vessels like you and I, us together, to further His kingdom? Do we believe that God can use each and every one of us despite our past and even our present at online? I don't know where you're watching from today. I don't know what you're going through, but I'm asking you a simple yet powerful question. Do you believe that regardless of where you stand with God right now, that he can change that in an instant, just like he changed this little girl and turned her into the person that we know today, Mary, the mother of Jesus? Do you believe, do we believe that even though the world looks so dark and so scary, that there is a bright hope. Maybe that's not swelling your mind at all today. So what do you need to believe God for? Because another way to say this verse, with God anything is possible, is the way that the Apostle Paul says it in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, that through Christ, I can do anything. That through Christ, I can do whatever He calls me to do. Again, Luke chapter 1, verse 37 says, With God, anything is possible. 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 Now, kids, I want you to draw this. What's an activity that you struggle to do? Do you struggle to swim? Do you struggle to ride a bike? Do you struggle to go to school? What is something that you wish you were good at, but for whatever reason, you're not good at? Draw that activity that's hard for you. Because the important phrase in here is this idea, with God. Now, when I first started thinking about this, I thought about this idea of unity. That if somehow we could become unified with God, that anything was possible. And as I was going down the road this morning, I felt like, man, I got that all wrong. That phrase, with God, what does it mean? It means because of. Say that with me in your car. Say that with me or type it in the chat right now. Because of God, anything is possible. Why do I say the phrase because of? Because of God's strength. Because of God's character. Because of God's power. Because of God's love. Because of God's mercy. Because of God's kindness. Because of God's loving kindness towards us through His Son, Jesus. Anything is possible. You need to hope for that. You need to say amen for that in the chat room. Because of God, His mercy, His love, His kindness displayed to us through His Son Jesus, anything is possible. COVID could turn into the best thing. Racial inequality doesn't have to be a thing. The United States can truly be the United States, that we can walk in our callings. All these things are possible. Whatever you bring in heavy laden, but Jesus says, all you who are burdened, all you who are heavy laden. He doesn't say, I'll give you more burden. I'll give you less. And I guarantee you, whether you're in the car, online, you may need more sleep. I think all of us would say, hey, I'd love some more sleep. And Josh says, amen, yes. 
but we need rest. And that word rest comes from that word shalom, which means peace or completeness. With God, anything is possible. And here's what I know about you, and here's what you should know about me, is that we all want to be united with him in his mission to bring about this kingdom that he talks about all throughout scripture. Your will be done, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. That to be united with him means to be united in his mission to be about bringing his kingdom to earth. To be united with him means to bring about his purpose by reconciling men unto himself. That taking that people that were far from him and showing them the grace of God through our lives so much so that they want that grace in their life. They want that love. They want that hope. They want that mercy. And by the life that he's given us, we are reconciling men and women and children, every man, every woman, every child unto himself through the life that we live. And we call that purpose. If you're looking for purpose, God gives it freely. An identity. To be united with him in mission, to be united with him in purpose, and lastly, to be united with him in identity. When it says with God, what he's saying is through my strength, through my power. Who's in charge? Who's the source? Who's the creator? We have to stop saying it's us. And bow the knee to the one who truly is in charge. The one who truly is the source. We are simply a resource. He is the source. And he's calling us to submit to himself. To submit to his son. Because with God, anything is possible. With God, anything is possible. I wonder if you would just say that to yourself in your car. I wonder if you say that to yourself outside these chairs. I wonder if you'll say that to yourself watching online. With God, anything is possible. With God. It seems such like a simple five word phrase. And it truly is a simple five-word phrase. But the implications have eternal. It's eternal in its manifestation. With God, anything is possible. And the question that we need to simply ask is, do we believe? Do we believe that we're in step with this God's mission? Do we believe that we're in step with this God's mission? Do we believe that we're in step with this God's purpose? Do we believe that we're in unity with this God? To be in one accord with this God. Do we believe that we're swimming in the same direction as it relates to Jesus, as it relates to God, as it relates to the Holy Spirit. When it comes to your head, your mind, your rational self, are you saying but, 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 but? Are you saying with, 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 with? When it comes to your heart, are you saying believe, believe, believe? Are you saying how, how, how? When it comes to your hands, are you saying whoa, whoa, whoa? Are you saying bring it on, let's go? You know, a couple weeks back, we were doing online services. And I, I'll never forget, because I was singing with Jordan online. And you could hear my voice through his microphone. And my wife came to me after that. And she said, you can't sing anymore on the live stream. And I said, why, baby, why? I like it when I can worship. She said, worship without singing. She said, because you are in tune. 
And guys, I know that all of us hear this with God, anything's possible. Ra, 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 sis, kumba. And we love it. And it's true. But the only way that we can see fruit from it, produce, results, is if we are in step, if we are in rhythm, and if we are in tune, if we are united. And I know, I don't think, I'm not wondering, I'm not questioning, I know whether you're watching online today, whether you're hearing or watching right now, that so many of us want to be in step, want to be in rhythm, want to be united, but we find ourselves out of rhythm, out of tune, out of step, swimming in the wrong direction. Put whatever metaphor that you want to the idea that we are not united with him. We want it. We desire it. But we are not, so what do we do? We respond in three simple ways. Number one, let's put a name to this God. With God, anything is possible. At the Grammys, I hear, I thank God. At the MTV Awards, thank God. When I hear President, God bless America. Let's put a name to this God. His name is Jesus. He was born of a maid. He lived 33 perfect years, did miracles upon miracles that no man ever did. He died in my place. He died in yours so that we could have life. His name is Jesus, the God of the universe. The one that in Colossians says that he was in all things, before all things, through all things were created and made by him and for him. That's the God. Realize that in our heads that we got to put a name to him. Not only that, not only do we have to put a name to him, but we also have to put a belief to him. Put a belief to him, to respond to him today. And here's what I believe. That many of us find ourselves out of step with this God, and today we need to respond to him by saying, God, I want you and I need you and I want to be united in you and through you. I don't know who that is in here today. I don't know who that is online. I just know that there are a lot of people that find themselves out of step, out of rhythm, out of tune. And today you have an opportunity to get in step, to get in rhythm, to get in tune by simply responding to this one whose name is Jesus. Do you find yourself disconnected or are you never connected? In whatever place you find yourself today, we have to respond to him. Disconnected people, people who haven't been to church in a while, who, who found themselves disconnected from him, simply say, God, I'm sorry, I need you back in my life. Those who have never been connected to repent of your sin, to believe on the name and the person that's Jesus. And let him be the Lord of your life. As we're getting ready to sing today that he is my cornerstone, Christ alone. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that we realize today that with you, Jesus, anything is possible. And I know that so many people bring so many things in here today from worries about COVID to worries about their job and everything in between, family issues, health issues, everything in between. And Father, based on these things, I pray that we'll leave this place knowing that when we're in step, when we're in rhythm, when we're in tune, that with you, Father, all things are possible. Because of you, all things are possible. Church, online church in person, I pray today that you'll lay on the altar, that is God's altar, the thing that you need for him to do. 
lay that on the altar as your offering, as your sacrifice, and simply ask this question. Simply ask this question, God, am I in tune with you today? And be quiet and listen. If you don't hear anything, probably you're not in step. If you hear a resounding no, I would take that as a no. And if you hear yes, talk to somebody and make sure that you know that yes is a firm yes. Father, it's in Jesus' name I come to you praying that I've glorified your Son. Asking that your Spirit would do the work that the Spirit does, whether it's online or in person, but that we would give glory to you, Lord Jesus, because we need you. We don't need more money. We don't need more resources. We need you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. to do me a favor if you're still sitting in your cars go ahead and tune your radio to 107.3 our speakers might be cutting in and out a little bit but that radio won't cut out on you it's a clean signal to you so you always have worship coming to you even if this cuts out up here right let's sing this together
simple, but my prayer is pure, that we would truly know, that we would truly see, we would truly understand what the words mean, that with you all things are possible. Help your people, God, to know what it means that all things are possible. I can trust in that and know that. Help me, God, when I fall, when I fail, when I stumble, when I stutter, to remember the words that I preach, that through you, in you, all things are possible. I love you, Lord Jesus. All right, so I got some good news. We're going to get ready to have a baptism. So I asked my friend Paul to come on up here. Uh, I want to ask you guys also to give up for my friend Kathy, who's here. Door house. Come on up here, Miss Kathy. Today is our day. We've been giving all throughout the week. But today's the day that we get to give for our $5 gift club. And we have Kathy... Listra? Lista. Lista here. Come on up here. You're good. As long as you're okay to come up here, I'm okay for you to come up here. Have you ever talked from the back of a truck? It's a first for everything. It was a bucket list, right? It was definitely a bucket list. She gets to uh, get her bucket list item checked off the box, but she's here to share with us a little bit of the vision and the heart 
so you guys can understand what your five dollars is going to and remember that your five dollars is being doubled so for every five dollars that you give that's ten if you decide to give ten then that's twenty if you decide to give twenty then that's forty so that money is doubled it's been matched by somebody in our church so that we can not only bless but exceedingly bless the open door house and the incredible work that it's doing so Catholic please tell us just the heart I'm gonna step down I'm gonna go around you if I get ready for baptism Give us the heart behind this. Um, thank you all for having me here. And if I may, I'd just like to start in prayer just to um, ask God to guide my words. So if you would, um, just let me start with a little prayer. Father, thank you. Um, Father, it's no coincidence of uh, Pastor Corey's message that through God, all things are possible. Through you, God, all things are possible. And that I am an example of that possibility um, of the Open Door House. Father, I ask that you guide my words. I ask that you open hearts and minds. Um, Father, because this is not my story, this is your story. And this is not my um, my ministry, this is your ministry. So Father, I just ask that you be with me and stand with me and just guide my words. Um, and I pray this in your perfect name, in Jesus' name, amen. Um, so just to give you a real quick overview of how this even started so you can understand what um, a miracle I think that it is. I come from 16 years of design and retail experience. Um, I was in the furniture world for 16 years. Um, the last nine of those years I worked for Bassett Furniture. Um, I had a great job. I was a regional visual manager. It was comfortable. I made good money. I had great benefits. I had the best team of visuals. I was very comfortable until God said, I'm gonna take you out of your comfort zone for a little bit and I'm gonna test your faith. So in October of 2015, I was invited to be part of a um, service project um, at Place of Hope in Palm Beach, Florida. And just the fact that I was invited to be part of that project is um, without a doubt, that was God. Um, my company always used to partner with local organizations and reach out and donate furniture services all that good stuff. I was never invited to be part of that because that just wasn't my role. And God knew that I needed to be um, at that place, a place of hope on, in October of 2015. We donated furniture, decorated an apartment for two young women who had aged out of foster care. And that was, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm uh, emotional right now. That was the first time that I had heard uh, what aged out of foster care meant. So when kids turn 18, if they don't have a family of their own, um, they basically have to find a place to live. So if they don't have foster parents that can keep them, that will keep them, they are get to go and um, be on their own and, and step into adulthood. So that is hard for any 18 year old at the time. My kids were 17 and 20 and all I could do for that three, four hours that we were there was think of what would my kids, Mark and Lauren do if they were faced with this decision. So. Like any mom, I cried for four hours like a fool um, and was completely embarrassed by my um, emotions that overwhelmed me. But I came back to Charlotte um, on a mission because God changed my heart that day. He planted a seed and um, and I couldn't I couldn't stop that seed from growing. So I came to Charlotte. I wanted to lend my services to um, an organization and I started brainstorming. I reached back out to the director of Place of Hope, see if he could put some feelers out if he had any connections very long story made short that wasn't that wasn't the role I was supposed to take um, I felt God over the the next two years pulling me to start my own nonprofit um, one Sunday message was God break my heart for what break yours what breaks yours and and I prayed that prayer and he he really did break my heart for um, homeless youth for youth who have been traumatized for youth that don't have anywhere to go and so Almost two years to the date, um, October of 2017, the, the Open Door House was an official 501c3. The next year I spent kind of praying and saying, okay, God, let me know when it's time to focus full time because my job at the time um, involved a lot of travel and a lot of time away. And I knew I wasn't gonna be able to really get this thing off the ground while I stayed there. So um, Corey was talking about how God uses the most unlikely and so for a year and a half, I cried and prayed like, God, are you kidding me? Are you sure you want me to do this? Because I am the least likely to do this. I have no experience in this. I don't know why you want me to do this, but he just kept saying, trust me. So um, a year later, September of 2018, I put in my notice at Bassett and December 1st of 2018, 
I was full time at the Open Door House and it was full time of just me. So I didn't know what to do, where to begin. And I've, I can just tell you that um, the past almost two years have been nothing less than a miracle after a miracle after a miracle. And if you ever want to sit down with me and get the full story, because I know it's hot and I'm rethinking the sweater, this black sweater I wore today right now, um, I'd be happy to sit with any of you and tell you the whole story so you can see the things that God has done. But most recently, he has provided a house, um, a church in downtown Concord, Impact Church had this beautiful house on Spring Street. They weren't using, it was empty. They knew, to, they knew something had to be done for kids aging out of foster care. So they invited me to be a part of it um, and to take over this house and use it. So we now have um, a home we are renovating right now. We're gonna be welcoming, um, hopefully if funding keeps, keeps coming in, we need to hire a case coordinator and we're gonna be welcoming our first two young women. Um, and there we are gonna provide for them a one-year program of services besides just a place to be. Um, and it's more than just a shelter, it's, it's gonna be a home. So we're gonna be removing aloneness besides just providing services and programs. I wanna provide a, a bit of a family feel. So um, we're gonna be, it's a one-year um, residence stay. And after that year, we'll kind of reevaluate and see where they're at. Um, my hope and prayer also is a home for young men um, and then eventually some sort of um, crisis service center and resource center because you guys there is nothing in Cabarrus County there are no transitional housing programs there are no crisis services um, if young people find themselves homeless they have to go to a men's shelter and I don't know about you but my kids said there's no way I'd be going to a shelter with a bunch of adults it's just creepy so um, there's so much work to be done if any of you would like a, a tour, you want to come and see that house, I would love to come and show you what God has done through me, the most unlikely candidate, trust me, um, that you'll ever meet to be doing this. But it's been miraculous. Corey, thank you. Corey got to come and see the house. And I just, I, I appreciate this opportunity. Thank you so much. And um, this was wonderful. Thank you guys for having me. Hey guys, let's extend our hands and pray for, pray over the work that Kathy is doing, her staff, her volunteers, her church. You guys, you go to Venture as well, and Venture is highly involved in this, right? Yes. And uh, so big shout out to David Henderson and Mike Landrum, all those guys that are at, at Venture. Father, we pray for Kathy, pray for her husband, her family. We know that this work is not easy, but it's God. And with God, all things are possible. When she speaks of a, a house for boys, with God, all things are possible. When she speaks of a need for a case coordinator, the $36,000 to provide for that staff member, with God, all things are possible. To transition two young ladies in their first year, with God, all things are possible. We thank you, Lord, that Kathy is sold out to your cause, sold out to your mission, sold out to your purpose. And I pray that, Lord, all of us can look at Kathy and hear what she said. I am the most unlikely of candidates, but I said yes. And I believe that's what you're looking for from all of us is our yes. With God, all things are possible. With God, young ladies who did not have a future will have a future. Young men who did not have a future will have a future because of a yes, Father. Would we all put our yeses on the table? And we pray for Kathy. We pray for the open door house. Thank you, God, that it truly is an open door for those who are so desperate and need it so much. Thank you, Lord, for her vision, her mission, and your provision. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Kathy. Let's give it up one more time for Kathy, y'all. Let's grab that, that, the stairs for me. All right, Mr. Paul, come on up here, brother. Ow. So everybody, this is Paul Tobin as he's making the long walk. 
If you're a student at Weddington Hills, you, you know him as Mr. Paul. Mr. Paul was part of the custodial staff at Weddington Hills. Come on up here, bro. Take your shoes off. Yeah, watch your head. I remember, and I might be telling a secret on you, bro, and if I am, I apologize deeply, deeply, deeply. Come on up. I'll help you. You got it? We didn't have no warm water, man. We have to get you shocked. Go ahead, get your, get, 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 take your time, take your time, guys. I, 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 uh, I remember when Paul worked the first few Sundays that he worked at church, and I don't know if you remember this, but I, I caught you sitting behind the curtain listening to the message, and I was just so excited that you were that you were willing to do that, man, and to see you come in these waters. It's, uh, it is cold, yes, sir. But it feels good out here right now. Uh, it does feel good. I would. I think I might preach from that if I could. All right. All right. You got it. Woo! You'll remember this day for the rest of your life, sir. You'll remember this day. You got it? You ready? All right. All right. So, Paul, just a few questions. Man, have you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior of your life? Yes. Do you, do you want to be baptized today? Yes. So, one, one quick thing, you guys, what baptism is and what baptism isn't. Baptism, baptism is not the saving agent. It is the demonstration of the saving agent. The same way that a couple displays their love by putting rings on their fingers. The rings do not save them. It's the love that they have inside of them that allows them to enter to that commitment. That same type of love Paul has accepted from his Savior Jesus to forgive him of his sins, to make him into the man that God desires him to be, and to have that eternity in heaven. And Paul, what I want you to remember that as you go underneath this water, bro, the symbolism is that the old Paul stays in the water. And the new Paul, through the Holy Spirit, rises out of the water. Now look at me. That already happened from our conversation on the phone the other day. This is the symbol of what has already happened. All right, put your hand on your nose. Grab it right there. So Paul, I baptize you in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in his death. Buried in his death. You can take your hand off there. Buried in his death. Raised to new life in Jesus Christ. Let's give it up some more homes real quick. You want to stay in there? You getting out? Okay. Guys, thank you for joining us at the Sojo Drive-In. Two quick things. Mobile Food Pantry this Wednesday night. Or this Wednesday morning at 8.15. And also, Thursday, we have our special prayer meeting. Uh, prayer and praise at the, at the Cabarrus Association. I hope you guys will join us there. Thank you for being here. Rick, you win our prize for today for laying across the hood. We love you for that, man. He's already over here. He's first in line. God bless you guys. And Oh, I forgot. I need one more announcement. We signed our LOI on our new building. They're drawing up the lease this week. This will probably be our last week at Papa Rob's. I'll let you guys know that for sure this week on Thursday specifically, but this will likely be our very last Sojo drive-in. So, Kathy, you guys got to experience the last one, so we're so glad you guys were here today. And God bless you guys, and hope to see you this Thursday night for our special prayer night.